name is Rama Balasubramanian. I am with uh, Jensen Investment Management. Uh, and today I'm your host for today's edition of Meet a Business Leader. Um, I'm doing this as part of the education series for um, Society for Information Managers Portland chapter. Uh, and in today's edition, we have uh, Sebi Verdej, uh, who's the CEO for Clackamas Community College. He's an angel investor. He's a He's a speaker, a keynote speaker, and a project manager, and a number of things. Uh, so without uh, further ado, I give you Sebi. Cool. Thanks, Rama. I really appreciate this opportunity to be here uh, talking with you. You know, my full name actually is Sarabjit Singh Vadach. Right? So every time I'm ready to board a plane, usually there are two, three folks in front of me. Usually there is Mr. John, right? Mr. John will hand over his boarding pass. The agent will say, welcome, Mr. John. And Mr. John walks in and, you know, then usually is Miss Emily. And then I show up with my boarding pass and the agent says, welcome, looks at me and then say, welcome. Right. So that's why it's Sabi. You know, people say, can I make it more spicier to make it easier? We're like, yeah, sure. So they give me a new name called Wasabi. Yeah. You know, spicier version of Sabi. Um, I'm very excited to be here today in front. Uh, I'm director of marketing for Sim Portal and Chapter as well. So this is very near and dear, uh, you know, topic, talking about leadership, talking about technology, everything else around that. So really looking forward to this conversation. Amazing. So uh, so think about Ramakrishna and Balasubramanian, that poor <laughs> flight attendant. With the, so there you go. So, so That's why it's it. Rama. That's why it's Rama, right? It's Rama. That's yeah. the name of the so, God, so, right? <laughs> you take exactly. the name of the God right there. Exactly. So there are like, I have so many instances like these these callers I get, like um, they're, they're, they're reading off a list and I have yeah. been called Rama Superman, Rama Superman <laughs> man, like yeah, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I hear you, man. I hear you. <laughs> you know, it's it's interesting thing is because my real name is still Sarabjit, right? Sarabjit. So sometimes, you know, they pick up the first four digits of the name. So think about that. The first four digits, they were like, okay, where is Sarah? I can't, I can't see her. It's yeah. like, okay, that's really interesting. So I've seen all kind of, you know, as you said, yeah. different yeah. combinations of the name. Right. <laughs> yeah. So... Yeah, no, um, that's interesting. Yeah, but uh, so, um, yeah, how did you uh, kind of start your your journey? Um, so there's um, the, as part of this education committee, what we're trying to do is is create uh, a lot of content for for young professionals who are aspiring to be in leadership roles like yourself to be um, probably be in uh, similar shoes where they're investing in, in technology, um, yeah. they are, they're speaking about technology. So, so how did that, that kind of journey start for you? Yeah, so my journey started back in India. Uh, I was, you know, I was born in the most perfect city in the world, right there. You know, so if you don't know what's the most perfect city in the world, you can just go to Google and type in the most perfect city in the world and my hometown will show up. You know, it's Chandigarh, northern awesome. part of India, about yeah. five hours drive from New Delhi. And BBC did a study in 2016 and they said, Chandigarh is the most perfect city in the world. So here you go. So if you didn't learn anything from this, you at least learned one thing that Chandigarh Chandigarh is the most perfect perfect city city in the world. (laughs) So, you know, growing up in India, it was interesting. Uh, Middle-class family, you know, the parents there, uh, when you're growing up, there are only basically two fields uh, for anybody, right? You, you could very well relate to that. Either you're going to become an engineer or you're going to become a doctor, doctor. Yeah. right? And there is a theory behind it, uh, basically. And the theory behind being a computer engineer, we, we see so many folks into technology. Why is that? For me, basically, I think this was uh, not only, you know, technology sounds exciting, fun, sexy and everything, but it's also a little bit more on the human need side of the thing. And I will share that with you. You know, growing up in India, there is no, first of all, there is no 100% electricity running into your home. So when it's hot, it's really hot. There's no central air conditioning. Water only comes for two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. But guess what? If you become a computer engineer, 
you will be able to work in a very clean environment where you will be working in an air conditioned environment for most of the time right yeah. so th that was a big motivator saying okay if uh, if it because it gets really hot in northern part of india it, some yeah. days it could touch 45 50 degrees and you don't have air conditioning over there middle class families never had growing up you know you had coolers right if you can remember those you put water in there you know and yeah. then they will only run yeah. for an hour at night so yeah. looking at that you know saying okay you know that's what motivated me to go to computer science because first of all you're going to work in a nice environment and second you're going to get a good job right uh, it's a, it was a really good paying job that really motivated me to go into this field of computer science very rewarding financially rewarding um, you know and uh, there's a certain status associated with that in uh, also the yeah. work environment you you spot on like there have been oh, occasions yeah. when i was i grew up in mumbai uh, bombay yeah. um, and um, there was occasions where so it would be so hot that I yeah. I just get on my bike and get into the office and because it's cool cool there <laughs> absolutely it's like it's bon you know I worked actually Rama for two and a half years I will believe in uh, Mumbai I worked for LNT Infotech nice. over there last in two bro nice. and I could very well relate to that like we would actually stay in the office at night right yeah. and people were like man you're hardworking people yes we are hardworking but there is that human need inside where where it is okay yeah. if i go back to my apartment you know i'm not sure if there is going to be an electricity because there's so much load everybody grabs in and then there there goes your electricity so why don't i mm -hmm. just work through the night and spend some time in the yeah decent... no completely makes sense yeah and yeah. um and these are like um might be hard to relate to but uh i totally hear what you're saying is because i mean it's um it, it's not it's not a condition you see here, that, which is why I keep telling my boys, like, listen, <laughs> um, you have to kind of adapt um, because situations are the way they are. And, um, and there's nothing wrong uh, in, in, in working, you're staying out of trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you know, there are so many other places I could have been. I know yeah. that for yeah. myself. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so great. No, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, in, um, and at what point, um, what would you say were some of those kind of uh, pivotal points or turning points in your in your career where, um, you know, you just said, okay, this is all fun, but now I'm getting into the groove of this. Like I, yeah, yeah, like I want yeah. to get to the next. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, I'd, uh, I got into a good college back in India. So if you work hard, you know, there's so much competition, there's so much population over there. So. Uh, the college I went to is called Punjab Engineering College. Oh, nice. So 20,000 20, students apply for that. And guess what? There are only 30 seats for computer science. Nice. And half of them are already reserved, right? And then you okay. only get like chance at 15. So you have to be really, really work okay. hard to get into that college. Got into the college and then it's like, okay, you're good. Right. right. You, you, you know, college is okay. You go through the college and then uh, you join. Uh, if you're in a good college, companies usually come on the campus mm -hmm. for the third year and uh, they will recruit you. And, you know, that was 1995 when I joined and 99 was around the time frame when I graduated. You know, at that time, you know, it was a booming time for technology, very mm -hmm. good time but also a very bad time because it was crashing at the same time, right? Yeah. So yeah. we were right there in the middle where, okay, you know, we're going to get good jobs and there might be an opportunity to go abroad. But then you, for H-1B visas at that time, you need at least one to two years experience like that. So we were just sandwiched in there because we, we were excited, but right. we didn't have that experience. But that was one time uh, when you know, we had to, at LNT Infotech, my very first job, we were given choices or sort of choices saying, okay, you have three choices. You can either go to Java, you know, uh, Enterprise Java Beans at that time was really hot. A uh, second one was uh, you can do SAP, which wasn't considered anything at that time. And, you know, our third was, okay, you can go to into GIS kind of work. So, I got lucky that I put into a Java thing and started working on those projects. And interestingly, the folks who were working on SAP who didn't want to work on SAP and mainframes or anything like that, 
they they were actually the very got very lucky because they got their first break to get out of yeah. india into united states or uk for those kind of right. projects because of the y2k project back then. y2k project right there right so the, they turned very lucky in that yeah. sense but worked there for one and a half two years uh, two and a half years for, and then worked for ge capital uh, as assistant manager software development yeah. and then moved over here uh, in 2003 and i started looking for a management job and every time got rejected mm-hmm. every single time first of all i'm sikh so not many people know about sikhism sikhism is world's fifth largest religion and i used to wear a turban right okay. and 911 had just happened around that time frame mm-hmm. so there was although you know you say there is no discrimination i face so much here mm-hmm. in portland mm-hmm. that i was like okay uh, every time i go no rejection you don't have skills you don't have support for managing the teams and everything else around that so i first one in my family to come here knew nobody uh went to see i went to a temple a uh, sikh temple and there was this professor he was teaching at uh, university of phoenix and i shared my story with him and i was like you know i am getting all these rejections how can i do it was like you know you need to go and get some education that will help you So I went to Portland State, did my masters. I still wanted to be connected with technology because I loved technology part of that. Rather than going for MBA, I mm-hmm. went for engineering and technology management so that I can nice. keep my technology, you know, things in there. Right. Right. And that actually helped me to, you know, uh, because I started doing some consulting work at the side, and that was a defining moment to still continue with technology. Yeah so that did for about 2 years and then you know masters completed and then I went back into the job market still looking for a management role and guess what mm-hmm. never got one started back as a software developer that's where you know my background is so started my journey as a software developer and in 2005 I joined city city of portland as a software developer nice nice so this time uh, you went back into software with an intention to be in software not just for the good air conditioning and clean environment <laughs> <laughs> this time actually it was different right i always wanted to be a software application development manager right a uh, different thought process because uh, i loved my time at g you know managing uh, the team and everything else around that but uh, this was a great opportunity so i was like okay let me go back into software development and hopefully one day i will become uh, an application development manager right right see how like, you came very far from there yeah um, so what was the language that you uh, were writing code in back then yeah so started with java right so i got certification in sun certified java developer yeah. that was that, the, that was a huge deal back then. huge deal at that time right so did that and then uh, came to it's interesting when i was applying for the city and i was applying for so many positions i didn't even yeah. know right i had yeah. background both in dotnet i was doing that in uh, g capital dotnet c sharp asp.net actually not even dotnet asp yeah. you know vb6 you know yeah. th- those kind of things and then eventually started learning c sharp and everything else around that yeah. so i was applying for all kind of languages right uh, all kind of jobs whether it's java whether it's c sharp so i applied for this position at city of portland and i got selected for an interview and i had no clue like which language did i apply for right <laughs> so when i was preparing for that i had i didn't save even the job description at that time like okay so i go in there thinking i applied for c sharp because c sharp at that time 2005 was really really hot right picking java up, yeah. was picking up a lot of so i go in there and the interview was about java I was like, oh my god okay no worries you know i can still swing it and uh, and they selected me i was you know there was like okay yeah good questions able to ask answer those questions and ability to you know show that experience that join city of portland 22nd awesome. august 2005 i still remember that <laughs> nice 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 that's great great yeah no so um so yeah there are um, what would be like let's just say at this point like what would be some of your um some of the thoughts for somebody who's who's going to starting out now right like um not in exactly similar shoes but uh, there's still a lot of folks in in similar shoes like yours and mine i mean our stories are not that that very different but 
very similar but even the, like somebody local who's just trying to see hey um, let me try to get a foothold in this industry like what are what are like um, what are your thoughts where should they start today yeah yeah i think you need to be you know a master in one language whatever that is that will be you know don't run up after all these different languages uh, just be master in one though go on are the days when you could have a generic right but pick one start doing start building something in there you know you can work with uh, you can do some internships there are many organization who provide internship opportunities and everything else around that get some certification in that because that will actually give you that edge over everybody else right so once you start building code once you start building some applications you know upload those so when you're going for an interview you can actually show the work which you're doing so you have to be really good in doing something because there's a lot of demand but there's a lot of competition as well yeah no it totally makes sense right like with uh, with things like coursera and yeah. uh, uh udicity like i might be saying this incorrectly but uh, you know udemy the, udemy, udemy, udemy yeah. yeah the learning platforms uh, hacker rank i know yeah. when i was writing a lot of c sharp code i would put that on my resume saying um this was my hacker rank and then yeah. stack overflow like you yeah. know um, how many questions you have responded to on stack overflow oh yes i do remember yeah. that yeah so all of those are like hey i mean a great uh, starting points like you said if you're if you're focusing on a particular language and things yeah. like that like uh, i bet nobody like one wouldn't go wrong with starting with python these days oh, right? i was going to say the same thing yeah, right so. scripting language right there python is needed everywhere and almost yeah. everywhere so that's a good starting language to start with right yeah in uh, in like um from where you are right now like what do you see or how do you see um what do you call like these currently hot areas like it security um cloud computing those kind of those kind of areas what are your opinions on that like what, do you have any any recommendations words of wisdom when it comes <laughs> yeah no absolutely you know it security is really really hard and it's been hard for last i would say 3 4 years and it's not going to slow down anytime soon so even if you are not learning a language but you still want to get into technology getting a certification in cyber security or information security is a really really good you know certification there are you don't want to go to a university go to a local community college like portland community college gives you a cyber security certificate and once you clear your uh, uh, you know needed classes that's a great start and then you know we have seen uh, recently solar winds is a great example yeah. so much hacks going on uh, as a as a cio at clackamas community college i'm also a ciso chief information security officer right so we see these hacks every single day even just uh, uh, two days ago or even last week i will say a denial of service attacks right so it's it's a na- nagging thing it's a continuous yeah. thing and these things are going to keep growing as people become more and more as hackers get more and more smarter yeah. they're going to yeah. c- continue to hack these systems yeah. they want this easy money so i con- i i definitely see that information security field is going to continue to grow i also see that you know artificial intelligence is going to play a bigger part as part of information security right now a lot of this a uh, lot of the uh, assessment that you have to do is very human assessment and there's a lot of data which you have to be done that's where machine learning and ai can help you identifying those core data things where a human eye can make that assessment and you know make make the make those judgments so i see you know information security playing a huge role in there cloud computing absolutely uh six, seven years ago at city of portland uh we moved from on premise to office 365 and an mm-hmm. interesting story at that time you know uh was we were on the leading edge of moving to office 365 at that time mm-hmm. and th- th- we were looking for okay what makes why does it make any sense right mm-hmm. right at time so there are many benefits of cloud computing like disaster recovery business continuity and everything else around that but you have to look at your cost right what's the cost of moving to the cloud 
for next five years, right? You're gonna save something. Uh, you can't just say, you know, cloud sounds sexy. That's why I'm gonna move my infrastructure to the cloud. You have to look at the data to see whether it makes sense, right? Whether your infrastructure, uh, which is you, your present infrastructure in your data center, when is it ready for replacement? If you just, you know, uh, did a refre refresh last year, it, it, it still has, it doesn't make any sense, right? You still have three, four, five years left in that hardware. So don't make that decision where a vendor comes in and say, you know, we can move you to the cloud. Okay, do your assessment. Look at your next five years, what it's going to cost and how much money it's going to cost, uh, save you basically uh, moving to the cloud or it's going to cost more. Right. No, that totally makes sense. Yeah. And, uh, and to your earlier point about, um, so, so essentially be very mindful and deliberate about your cloud strategy. Yeah. Uh, don't just jump on that bandwagon uh, because everybody and their parents yeah. are jumping into it. Um, yeah. Make a specific assessment for your own need and your yeah. own uh, investment profile. Right. I mean, yeah. so, so that makes total sense. And going back to the earlier point about, IT security and machine language and things like that. Uh, it's all kind of seems like it's all coming together, right? I mean, IT security is uh, requiring us to keep a lot of logs and lots yes. of, you know, related artifacts uh, for longer. And now yeah. to look for where it all started, do a forensic analysis, or even yeah. just get real-time alerts, you need yeah. more than just a, a you know, pair of eyeballs on glass, uh, yeah. you know, you need uh, that kind of horsepower with the machine computing and the, the, the machine learning and the artificial intelligence aspect of it too. Absolutely. It. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally makes sense. And, and uh, a plug for Python, right? I mean, uh, Python can do all of these pretty well. So it's a scripting yeah. language, like you rightly said, and uh, yeah, it just works completely well. Uh, yeah. So that, that brings you a good segue. I mean, uh, what do you think about like these, like uh, uh, we cannot end a technology call without talking about blockchain. Uh, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about something like that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, blockchain, uh, when it, it came into the picture, uh, into the mainstream about three, four years ago, right? There was a lot of buzz around that, but it's taking, it's taking so much time to get mature in that yeah. environment, right? There are, it's a really cool technology. I love it. Right, mm -hmm. but you have to find specific cases where it where you can get value out of it. Um, mm -hmm. I was talking to another uh, good friend of mine. He's working on a startup, and they're using blockchain technology for uh, student certification. Great, neat idea. I was like, man, that sounds cool. Uh, the big thing in there is, you know, the cost of you know each transaction because cost and the time as well because when you are writing into blockchain technology it takes a lot of time so how do you can reduce that speed of writing those records and fetching those records right so that is a big piece in there and cost is another one so as you know technology starts maturing more more and more players come into the picture more innovation happens in there i definitely see a value of blockchain uh, getting more into the mainstream yeah and uh, no you're right it's the it's always the same conversation, right? Cost versus benefit, that analysis. That's where um, you need the years of experience under your belt and you also need to be really aware of your business context, right? And, yes. and really, is this solving your problem, your today's problem and your next year's problem? And you know, yes, we have to invest in future technologies, but um, how far down the horizon is it? And how much is the investment? What's the right. ROI going to be on that one? Totally makes right. sense. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, and, and big thing in there, Rama, what I see is, you know, uh, IT leaders need to start wearing a business leadership hat in there and build those relationship with those business leaders and show them the value of technology because business leaders don't understand. They understand the problem, right? Okay. So build those relationships with them saying how technology can help them to solve these issues rather than just pushing technology saying, okay, I'm just pushing a technology. This will solve their problem. Guess what? You are not making them a stakeholder. You're not getting that buy-in. You're going to get so much resistance because you, you, were, you didn't your due diligence in building that relationship up front. Yeah, no, that's, 
it, like you said earlier, I mean, um, the, the point about uh, Chandigarh is, is one key takeaway, no taking yeah. away from that. Related to that, Punjab is the land of five rivers, right? Punjab, yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, I would add and the 1A, but two would really be uh, technology is a business enabler is what yeah. I'm hearing. You know, it's, it's, not a, it's not a means to its own end. It's, it's helping provide, uh, uh, it's helping drive business outcomes. And that should yeah. really be the focus of a leader there in yeah. that space, yeah. So no, that's very interesting. I am going to actually uh, put you on the spot a little bit here. I have been uh, looking at that monkey in the back and I've seen uh, some <laughs> LinkedIn posts lately <laughs> suggesting that I don't adopt the monkey. Um, I, I don't. There you go. Uh, plan to but but i'm sure there's a story behind that <laughs> so. yeah absolutely so you know what i talk about is how do you how do you become an effective leader i talk about three big principles in which you become an effective leader so you don't adopt a monkey adopting the monkey is when people come to you with their problems so, so to the what, listeners this is this is what sebi does uh, for paid speaking engagement so getting this for free <laughs> <laughs> sorry go ahead please yeah. no worries <laughs> so when people come to you with their problems right is the monkey which they want to give it to you and what do we do as nice human beings right we accept those that monkey and we think we are helping those team members but actually rather than enabling them we're disabling them because we adopted that monkey it became our problem and then eventually in the organization everybody knows who's adopting monkey sabi is so guess what everybody comes in and you know start giving those uh, monkeys to you so the, you don't have time to take care of your own problems so the role of the leader is to actually develop other leaders so that they can take care of those own monkeys right right, right. so right. three principles i talk about is relationship is the first one right. right how do you build relationships i talk about is do you actually get relationships g e t g stands for gratitude thanking your team right thank gratitude for yourself for the work which you're doing are you doing your high fives are you saying the work that your team is doing is making an impact be right. humble be thankful to them right e stands for empathy empathy is also three kinds empathy is okay i could i could feel somebody's pain but the first kind of empathy is that you can see somebody is going through something. Most of the time, you know, we as IT leaders are so much busy in our day-to-day -day firefighting. We don't spend time with our folks looking at, okay, how's it going? What's going on, right? right? That's the first kind of empathy where you can see it. Second is when you go and have a conversation with that individual and right. say, Rama, what's going on, buddy? I see you're a little bit off today. Are you doing okay? And Rama, you tell me, buddy. I'm having this challenge in my life, right? Whatever that is. And then you can relate to that, Great. right? And you can feel their pain because you yourself, either somebody in your family or other went through a similar experience, but you can feel their pain. But the most important kind of empathy is cognitive empathy. And what is that? You do one, you do second, you have a conversation, but then you take an action. And action is, Rama, how can I help? What can I do, buddy? What can, that's where you build those relationships. And then T stands for trust. There, if there's no trust, there's no relationship. True. And there are, you know, Brene Brown has a braving model to talk about trust. Uh, Stephen Covey has 13 principles, uh, 13 behaviors to build. A, right. You know, it talks about speed of trust. So there are, you know, those uh, ways to build that relationship. Uh, the second piece which I talk about is believe. Do you believe in yourself? If you don't believe in yourself, how is somebody else is going to believe in you, right? So how do, what are some strategies where you build that belief in yourself? How do you unchain yourself? I talk about unchain the elephant. And the last one, which I talk about is giving back, right? Most of the time we are in this mindset of, I will give when I have something. It doesn't work that way. You have to give first before you start receiving, right? So what are some ways which you can give, right? You are a volunteer. I'm a volunteer. We're giving right now to make this organization better, to make SIM Portland better, to you know make IT leaders come in. So the more you give, the more you're going to get back, but you have to give first. So those are some ways, you know. That's amazing. Amazing. Yeah, no. So it's, uh, it's really, yeah, don't adopt the monkey, unchain the elephant, uh, be... Uh, G-E-T, uh, 
get your, um, uh, you know, so provide gratitude, uh, empathy, create trust, amazing words of wisdom. So uh, nothing like this is, this is going to be very uh, absolutely amazing for folks who are listening because uh, it's a lot they can pick up from here. Absolutely. And the, the, the last aspect about networking and being part of, of these kind of, uh, tech, what do you call technology groups or like, like-minded people, right? People do yeah. business with people and, yeah. you know, go to where they are talking about their trade, right? Yeah. So in Portland, for instance, uh, is a very vibrant group. Uh, it's very active. Like, like uh, you're doing absolutely amazing work there. Um, so, and, and the idea is, um, you don't always approach life with a catch or smit, right? Um, yeah. You know, you you talk to five different people, they'll talk to you about what's going on with them. Somewhere in there, you get an idea for, hey, I could have yeah. done this, you know, yeah. in my organization. And yeah. next time you need help, you can pick up the phone and say, hey, listen, Sevi, I'm trying to do this. I, I heard yeah. you were you're doing this cost benefit analysis with the cloud. Like, uh, yeah. can you share that spreadsheet with me? It's like, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Things like that. Right. I mean, it's uh, if we all help each other get better. Yeah. And then, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also goes back to Fred Pond's conversation, right? <laughs> when he wanted to kind of change like the previous um, in the series was a conversation with Fred Pond <clears throat> as he was looking to make changes. He had this, this uh, network of, of professionals he had built over a number of years, uh, very carefully curated numbers he could pick up and talk to. So it's very important. Uh, that's another another um, great piece of advice. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. incredibly amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And and not only you know it's great for folks to come in, but if you want to volunteer for this organization, yes. right? Yeah. Come join the organization, be a volunteer. There are three kinds of leadership when I talk about. Number one is, you know, you're an IT leader, you're a supervisor, you're a boss, you're a manager. You have the power, you have the authority. Right? Yeah. So you can get the work done. That's at number three in terms of complexity. <clears throat> number two is when you're a project leader, right? You talked about project yeah. management. I want to give that, you know, I, I have a project management background, so I'm going to yeah. give that spiel in there. You know, when you're a project leader, you don't have any power, you yeah. don't have any authority, but you're still responsible for delivering the results. So yeah. if you want to say, Sabi, how can I become a better leader? Try to go and lead a project, a complex project, project right? Yeah. That's where you're going to learn your skills of motivating team, building those relationships yeah. and getting the work done. Absolutely. But at number one, in terms of complexity, comes a volunteer leader. Right. You know why? Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't have any power. They don't have any authority. All they do, all they can do is influence right. as a leader. And that, yeah. once you start influencing, right. you become the superpower leader where everybody looks to you and say, okay, this is the guy. I want to be like that. How can right. I become that? So come exactly. join same Portland chapter, yeah. join on the board. We have positions open, right? Yeah. Come sh safe environment for uh, sharpening your leadership skills. Hundred percent. Yeah. No, no kidding. Like, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't impress upon that fact more, um, any more than than what you have done, Sebi. Uh, it's uh, it's incredible. It's an opportunity. It's an opportunity to meet a wide range of people, uh, be able to immediately see the results of your actions. You know, yeah. do something innovative that you've never done before. Yeah. Um, in a in a controlled space, in a closed environment, um, work with teams, work with other people, and more importantly, work with people and try to drive outcomes where you have no influence, like you said. Yeah. Right. So that's yeah. that's the best way to learn project management. Uh, Absolutely. You can't get any better than that. Um, amazing. Amazing. So yeah, no, we covered a lot of ground here. Uh, this was amazing. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, so yeah, so if I were to kind of uh, recap uh, all of this, it's, um, you know, I'm looking at a, a number of things here. Um, so one is try to try to be a master at, uh, at some one skill, right? Absolutely. Uh, specifically in technology, uh, there are many ways to go about doing that. Uh, it's all knowledge is available for free or at a relatively low cost, number of ways to do that look constantly seek out opportunities to sharpen that skill whether it's Absolutely. whether it's on online based forums yeah. or whether it's in a internship uh, kind of setting you know look for 
opportunities to uh, yeah. to do that. Yeah, you have uh, to build a brand for that, Rama. Right? You have to build a brand. So if somebody says, "I take your name," what are you known for? Right? Is correct. it is it Python? Is it what is it? Do, how do you stand out as? Correct. Yeah. No. Hundred percent. And once you kind of build that brand, create a platform to advertise yeah. that brand. Right? Like and. and like groups like professional groups like sim are a perfect place to advertise that brand like every yeah. time you you do something you're you're also um kind of saying oh what do you do rama or, or what do you do sevi i mean i'm i do this this and this that's my brand right so you get to get in touch with other professionals you also get the opportunity to lead um uh, lead without influence which is the best way of leadership um definitely don't adopt the monkey <laughs> think about get uh, which is gratitude empathy and trust um, you know um, unchain the elephant you know lot of lot of lot of key 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 things for um, not just young professionals i learned a lot from this conversation so um, thank you thanks a lot for uh, for everything and more okay. importantly for your time here you know yeah, yeah. No, absolutely no. Thank you for Rama for giving this opportunity to have this conversation, you know. And uh, even if we can change one life with this conversation, I think our job is done. So we're going to continue to continue to build this and continue to change lives. Hundred percent. Yeah.